It's chapter 6, and we finally understand where the thumbnails come from. And the title of the novel. That one's probably more important. Welcome to Chapter by Chapter. Chapter 6 is the longest chapter so far, so there's a lot to unpack, but I want to start with this song, Never Let Me Go. First off, it's a good reminder that Ishiguro got his start as a musician, writing about music, making music, so it makes sense that he has a connection to music in this novel. We might get into that more later in our discussion here. But what's more important about this is that Kathy's discussion of the song establishes more of the setting for us. So because Kathy listens to this song by Judy Bridgewater on cassette, but not on a Sony Walkman, we can be fairly certain that her childhood years that she's describing here take place sometime in the late 70s, maybe early 80s. So all of a sudden, the setting starts to kind of open up a little bit more to us. There's a lot of other interesting information that branches off from this cassette tape. Uh, the first thing that she talks about is the fact that she eventually loses it. So the memory of losing this tape triggers another memory for Kathy, and that has to do with a specific location in England called Norfolk. And Norfolk is just one of the many areas in England. It's quite a, a well-known area. But during their lectures with Miss Emily, she has this map that she pins up different photos from different parts of England and she just doesn't have a photo from Norfolk and at one point she refers to it as a lost corner of England and because of that the students start this sort of um, in joke as Kathy says that when things are lost they go to Norfolk so because her tape is lost that's an important detail we have to remember and the idea of something being lost and being recovered is quite essential to this novel we should point out that the Judy Bridgewater song that Ishiguro has selected to use is called Never Let Me Go. Well, if you never let something go, then it can't be lost. So if something's lost, it must have been let go to some point, maybe? Just something to keep in mind as we continue uh, our discussion here and continue reading. One of my favorite things that the talk of the tape lets us, or the talk of the song, lets us understand is this memory with smoking. So on the cover of the cassette, we find out that uh, Judy Bridgewater is smoking a cigarette. And Kathy is so terrified of this that she actually takes the cover of the cassette and flips it around so that no one will see that uh, Judy Bridgewater is smoking a cigarette. And it shows me one of my, or it, it, it's a good example of one of my favorite things that Ishiguro does in his novels. So we talked earlier about how Ishiguro likes to use second person narration. And it's a line like this that really strikes me as is just so well done for his overall storytelling. Kathy's reminded about the smoking on the cover, so she says, I don't know how it was where you were, but at Hailsham, the Guardians were really strict about smoking. Now, the first time I read that, I, like many other readers, was probably like, oh yeah, that's like the same as my schooling years. Like the teachers said, don't smoke. This is really relatable. But all of a sudden, that relatability starts to get peeled away as things get weirder and weirder. Because at Hailsham, they're really strict about smoking. The Guardians make a huge point of bringing it up whenever someone in a painting or a book is smoking to talk about how bad it is for them. And in fact, Miss Lucy, who talks about in her past that she smoked, even says, uh, for you, all of you, it's much worse to smoke than it ever was for me. That's a little odd. You don't usually have a teacher say something like that. But even more weird than that is what Miss Lucy goes on to say, which is, you've been told about it. Your students, you're special. So keeping yourselves well, keeping yourselves very healthy inside, that's much more important for each of you than it was for me. So that's a, a very different approach than what most teachers would say. I mean, a lot of teachers want their students to have better lives than they had, but not to that extent. And another really kind of freaky thing that happens uh, at this school is any books that have smoking in them are censured. So books like Sherlock Holmes are removed from the library and pages are torn out of books. And this all has to do with smoking, which, yeah, smoking is bad, especially if you're young. But this is a really 
really big deal at this school. And it also seems like not a lot of stuff from the outside world gets into this school if it's not controlled through the sales. So you'd wonder why it would be a problem or a concern at all that they're so focused on making sure the students don't smoke. So some of you who are more astute readers or maybe have read very carefully or for the second time might already know why smoking is not um, acceptable in any way. But if you don't know at this point, if you haven't quite figured it out, that's okay. This novel is fun to read without fully understanding every detail. Keeps some of the mystery going. So I'll leave it at that for now, but ask me questions in the comments if you need to know more about it. One other major point about the song Never Let Me Go in this chapter is how Kathy listens to it. She, like many kids, likes to pretend the lyrics mean something different. I think she knows it's about a romantic relationship. But she pretends it's a relationship about a mother and her child, like her baby. And um, she says this, And what I imagine was a woman who had been told she couldn't have babies, who'd really, really wanted them all her life. Then there's a sort of miracle, and she has a baby. And she holds this baby very close to her and walks around singing, Baby, never let me go, partly because she's so happy, but also because she's afraid if something will happen that the baby will get ill or be taken from her. So this is an interesting interpretation of this uh, line in the, the song, Baby Never Let Me Go. And it's because of this lyric that Kathy latches onto it. The music style's interesting to her, but it's not what they're listening to nowadays. It's an old, an old song, even in the early 80s. So she loves to listen to this song whenever she gets a chance, whenever she gets to be alone in her dorm, because there's no Walkmans, as they said earlier. You have to listen to it where everyone could hear. And as she listens, she likes to dance around with a pillow and pretend that pillow is a baby. And, you know, as kids do, like to play pretend. But one day, something really creepy happens. She's dancing alone in the door, uh, or in the dorm, and the door is partly open. It has to be open, we're told. And as she's dancing with the pillow, I'll pick up and just read what happens. The song was almost over when something made me realize I wasn't alone, and I opened my eyes to find myself staring at Madame, framed in the doorway. I froze in shock. Within a second or two, I began to feel a new kind of alarm because I could see there was something strange about the situation. The door was almost half open. It was a sort of rule we couldn't close dorm doors completely except for when we were sleeping, but Madame hadn't nearly come up to the threshold. She was out in the corridor, standing very still, her head angled to one side to give her a view of what I was doing inside. And the odd thing was, she was crying. So I think there's just something really creepy about someone being in a doorway and not announcing themselves <laughs> to begin with. But then for them to be watching you sing a song and dance with a pillow and then start crying because of it is, is quite odd and confusing. But Kathy doesn't push the issue any further. She doesn't tell anyone about it, just as when the students were having their lesson with Miss Lucy, who told them they can't smoke, it's worse for them than it is for her. Even though the students wanted to ask why, none of them did. There's something about remaining ignorant by choice that's really interesting in the childhood of these students. And we'll talk way more about that as we get further in the novel, but just kind of bookmark those ideas of being afraid to ask these questions because they'll become quite evident in a couple more chapters. And so, as you'd expect of a song that gives the novel its title, the tape is pretty important. It becomes a piece of evidence in the detective work that bonds Tommy and Ruth together. It also, when it goes missing, becomes a chance for Ruth to help mend her relationship with Kathy and return the favor for when she covered for the pencil case in the art room. And that pretty much wraps up chapter six. I don't think I'm forgetting anything except, you know, that subtle little detail where Kathy says that none of the students at Hailsham can have babies. What's up with that? Maybe we'll find out in chapter seven. Thanks for watching.